Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to go through the ship build for what is the commonly recommended scout within the game, the Spyglass Corvette. So its name is derived from its two main components. First we're using the Corvette hull and we're using the Corvette hull because its signature size is the smallest in the game. So it's going to make it hard for the enemy to see our ship whilst we're looking for theirs. And the other component being its radar. So all ships start with the frontline radar, but we're gonna change that to the Spyglass radar, hence its name, the Spyglass Corvette. So this build senses around this radar. If we have a look at the description of the component, it says that the RS-41 sweep provides a long range sensor system. And we can see that here with the max range being 11.5 kilometers. Note that this is a hard range and you cannot exceed it. However, it is also important to note that just because it says 11.5 kilometers is that you won't necessarily be able to see everything out to 11.5 kilometers. The reason being that there are a number of factors such as the power, the gain, the aperture size, and the sensitivity, which are, are all gonna come into play to determine if we can see something or not. And not only that, but the radar signature size of the enemy ships that we wanna spot. Noting this, we should be able to easily see some of the larger ships, while it'll still be hard to see the small ships. Following on with the description, it comes at the cost of reduced sensor track accuracy. When we look at the positional error and the velocity error, any of the tracks identified by this ship, whilst we can fire upon them, are gonna be more inaccurate than if we had a lock or another type of radar identifying them. So the trade-off here is we have a long range sensor, but it makes it harder to shoot at. And it has a higher power draw. And this is our limiting factor here, which is this 4,000 power. One thing that is important to note is that this radar can't provide a lock. So whilst we can see tracks, we will require another vessel in order to provide a lock or an ally who is closer. So let's install this. Here you can see straight away we have received a warning that we don't have enough power. And if you have a look at our resources, you can see that we are at 145% power that we need to close the gap on. So how do we do that? Well, we can't add any more micro reactors because the slot is already filled. And there are no other slots available for a micro reactor. So we will add plant control centers instead, which will add power plant efficiency by 20%. And by adding that, we're at 121. So we'll add a second, yet we're still short. So there's only one real way to build this ship because of this reason, is that we have to come into our drives, which each offer power and add the whiplash drive, which adds an extra 150 kilowatts as opposed to all of the other base drives. So once installed, our power is gonna be at 100% and just by 15 kilowatts, we have successfully come through and added all the power to have this ship operational. Yet we still have one error that we need to add crew so we'll add some crew in now. And that clears the error and that leaves us with two crew under the required limit. Now you can change this, you can put berthing up into the basic CIC or one of these larger slots. However, it doesn't really change the fact we just need to get that warning gone. So this is it, this is the Spyglass Corvette for 215 points. Now it's important to note that whilst we're here, there are a few things that this ship can't do. Due to its power, it, we cannot add any other mounts, so it'll have no offensive or defensive weapons, and we can't add any additional modifiers due to the power requirement. We also have no damage control. If this ship takes any hits and there are fires, there'll be no way to repair it and it will slowly burn and explode. So some of the strengths of the ship, it's fast at 42 meters per second, the whiplash will increase flank damage probability by 25%. So my recommendation will not be to use any flank speed for the majority of the game, instead relying on the top speed and then only using flank speed in absolute emergencies and only for very short periods of time. As stated by the spyglasses effect, it's gonna be our longest spotting component. So whilst we'll be able to see track, we can use other ships in our fleet to provide the lock for the targets that this ship spots. By being only 215 points, this ship can be accommodated in most fleets. So the downsides of this ship, as previously stated, it has no offensive or defensive weaponry. So offensive is not as much of an issue, but however, the defensive is quite important. This ship is weak to missiles, as well as with no ability to add VLS-23s for reposts, chaff, or point defense, 
this ship is extremely liable to being targeted by enemy missiles, both hurricanes and thunderheads. As it is so small and it has quite thin armor, any missile strike is gonna cause significant damage to this ship, taking components offline and blinding you as your radar goes down. The great weakness of this ship is the fact that its power supply is so close to 100% that the minute one component is damaged, being the plant control centers, the drives, or the reactor, that this ship will start to lose power. And because everything is powering the spyglass radar, once that power is gone, this ship will cease to function for its intended purpose of spotting. So you need to be able to protect this ship whilst also putting it in a position that enables you to see the enemy. For experienced players, this is less of an issue as positioning is one of the things that I just learned over time, especially in 3D space. However, for newer players, there are a few tactical faults that we've all fallen into as we take what we've been told as a good spotting corvette, which it is, and drive it straight forward at the enemy. So tactics for this ship. This ship is not a frontline ship. It should not be deployed in the center of the galactic plane. However, it should be more on the edges, held back and inching forward so that it has its best chance to spot. Terrain blocks radar signals. So having this ship positioned in places where either A, the enemy needs to move through, such as a gap between terrain on pillars or above the map, for example, in Nix's eye, where it can look down and across through various points is certainly handy in assisting you in finding the enemy. At some point, they'll need to break cover or move around cover and into your line of sight. So for your initial phase, upon deploying, you wanna position this ship somewhere where it has line of sight to a location that the enemy is likely to be so that you're able to maintain, you're able to see those sensor tracks as you either A, progressively move forward or B, the enemy moves forward into your vision. So paying attention to that unit card when that yellow flashing icon appears lets you know that you've been spotted and then make the decision, do you need to maintain the ship's presence in order to support the rest of your fleet or can you move away from that known position, retreating rearwards in order to be hidden from the enemy's location, which you can assist by turning off your radar and or your comps to progressively lower your signature size, which we spoke at the beginning, that was one of the contributing factors to whether a ship is seen or not. In the mid to late game, the Spyglass Corvette becomes a bit redundant in its main point of actually providing a spotting capability or a search capability through its Spyglass radar. The reason being is that most of the fleets now in combat, you've started to get a couple of frontline radars up the front, so they're able to start doing taking over some of that closer proximity search capability for the enemy ships, whilst they're also providing the locks for the, the rest of the fleet. And the Spyglass Corvette can actually move into a secondary role, being a point capture role if you're playing control point. This is obviously assuming that this ship is still alive. The Spyglass Corvette, being a Corvette equipped with a whiplash drive, is organically fast. And with some of the pieces starting to be removed from the battlefield, the Spyglass Corvette has a little bit more room to move than it would originally have done at the beginning when ships were equipped with full complements of both missiles and guns. So in this case, when you know that a certain aspects of the battlefield are free, you can use the Spyglass Corvette to move into certain locations, capture the control point, and then move out. This is especially important in the late game where control points have swapped hands a number of times and the points are getting increasingly close to the victory condition. The ability to capture a point, to take that away from the enemy's count and increase your own is absolutely game changing. And for a lot of people, you would have experienced this in one of the games to date. Some of them being especially close, coming down to one or two points and that final tick to determine the victor. With all that said, that's the Spyglass Corvette in a nutshell. It is a very standard build. There is nothing that you can really do to finesse this anymore at this point in the game. Hopefully taking some of those tactics into your next match will preserve your Spyglass a little bit longer whilst enabling the rest of your fleet to not only see, but to get those necessary locks so that you can start the engagement early. For those who don't want to go spend the time recreating this by yourself, uh, I will upload this into the Steam Workshop so that everyone can just download that and add it as one of your defined hulls. Remembering you can always come into plus from ship template and add one of your hulls from here. If you'd like to see more of these sort of ship build, it is something that I would like to do a little bit more of, maybe even some fleet reviews. So just let us know down in the comments uh, and particularly what would you like to see built next?